Hello everyone, uh, I'm Greg Benson Shettle. I'm going to be your webinar attendant for th this afternoon and uh, welcome to this uh, overview of the uh, various vanilla AutoCAD versions. When I say vanilla, what we're talking about there is the standard AutoCADs as opposed to AutoCAD Architecture, AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Civil, AutoCAD MEP, all those various vertical versions for specialist markets. So we're going to be looking at the basic vanilla flavors that we have. <coughs> Take a quick stroll through um, an idea of uh, some of today's uh, agenda. Um, Obviously, the main th key area that we're going to be looking at is understanding some of the differences between the full-blown AutoCAD and the AutoCAD Lite, AutoCAD LT. Uh, we'll take a look at, uh, if we have some time, looking at some detail elements and through to different formats. And most of this will be covered in a PowerPoint-style presentation. Okay, there are some pretty big differences between LT um, and full AutoCAD. However, like so many things, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and the differences are only big differences if they matter to you. Um, let's take a look, um, in a nutshell, at some of the uh, key differences. Um, Full-blown AutoCAD has uh, a powerful set of 3D modeling tools and rendering. This simply isn't available uh, in Revit Lite, Revit LT. Um, Full-blown version has also have got uh, data extraction into tables. This can be really useful if you're putting together drawings with uh, lots of blocks, for example, um, and attributed data in there. All of the, that information can be extracted out into a table, which could then be looked at um, either on the drawing or even exported out into a format that uh, pro spreadsheet packages like Excel uh, can read. It's also API enabled. Okay, what does that mean? Um, it has, or the full-blown version has got an application programmable uh, interface. Now this facility, what it actually means is that there are plugins and extensions that are available um, for the full-blown version of AutoCAD. LT, basically it's more or less what you get is what you have and there's very little room for uh, adding any functionality uh, to that. With the full version of uh, AutoCAD, you can start customizing and creating your own systems, or you can go to uh, places such as the Autodesk Apps Exchange Center, where there are many uh, different uh, add-on packages that you can load in. Some are free, some are trial, and, and some obviously are paid for. They're not just from uh, Autodesk, they're from all sorts of different developers and that's one of the beauties of AutoCAD. It can be customized uh, to suit your particular industry and that's what the API allows you to do and and the, that increasing cost that you pay for it and that's one of the features that you get there. Network licensing as well. Uh, this is another feature uh, that is in the full version of AutoCAD. It allows you to manage the distribution of AutoCAD licenses um, from that have been going to be issued and working from a network. So people can be hot desking from one place to another, and as long as there is a license, a network license available, they can use their AutoCAD. Again, it's all down to that programming, that API in the background. Uh, LT doesn't have this facility. Point cloud. What on earth is point cloud? Okay. These days, more and more buildings um, get scanned in 3D. The data that these various scanners actually create is called a point cloud, and it's huge amounts of dots in space, in 3D space, and the full-blown version of AutoCAD can uh, bring in that data and uh, it can be colored up, you can use it, you can reference off of it, because they're all 
tiny little vector points which uh, you can then measure off of and uh, do quite a few other things. And we'll have a look at that in more detail um, a bit later. But again, LT doesn't have um, that strong programming background that can support that kind of advanced functionality. Another one, and this surprises a lot of people, is that full-blown version of AutoCAD comes with something called Express Tools. This is like an extra ribbon of tools um, with, that comes in with full-blown AutoCAD. And uh, I'll show you some of those. Um, I'll browse over that a bit later as well. But there's quite a lot of nice functionality in there, like being able to draw text along an arc, for example. That's an Express tool. You can't do that easily uh, inside of LT. So there's quite a few more things, but these are some of the main reasons that a drawing office you know, goes one way or another between full AutoCAD and LT. Obviously, more details are available from the Autodesk website. And that actually will look something like this. Now, you can actually go, uh, if you do a search, basically do a search for AutoCAD versus AutoCAD LT matrix, you should be able to find this page. And you can scroll down and actually see um, all of the differences uh, that you're buying, uh, depending on which version you go for. OK, so there's the URL for it. Um, but frankly, if you just type in AutoCAD versus AutoCAD LT matrix, uh, you should be able to find um, a page like this. Now, there's also some other uh, comparison pages available on the Autodesk website um, where you can choose between different programs that you may wish to. And uh, looking at that, I want to uh, expand this idea of AutoCAD being AutoCAD Lite and uh, AutoCAD Full AutoCAD because, of course, there is another version out there. There is, and I thought I'd introduce this as soon as we've got the opportunity, there is AutoCAD for Mac, okay, for, for Apple Macintosh uh, iOS uh, systems, okay. And uh, so here on this comparison page, what we can actually do is you can compare three products and you can tick in these different boxes here and you'll get a different listing and it will show you all the differences. So. I thought what we'd do is scroll through these and take a look at what some of these differences actually are. Okay. Right, so we've got some tick boxes there. The writing's a little bit on the small side, but hopefully we can make it out. Now, a lot of the common uh, elements between the products are all there. Um, obviously, support for the main DWG file format, um, multifunctional grips. Um, if you've not heard of that term, that refers to, in the newer versions of AutoCAD, um, when you pick on a line or, or circle or an arc, you've got those blue grips. And if you hover your mouse over those, you'll find a little menu pops up offering you more functionality. They're multifunctional, okay. Uh, they've all got command lines. Um, supporting dynamic blocks but let's see what else we have here now we're starting to get some um, gaps in our matrix um, full autocad has things called parametric constraints so for those of you that are particularly maybe doing uh, engineering drawings uh, you can actually uh, start creating designs with uh, some intelligence in them where for example if a hole in a piece of plate metal work always needs to be a set distance away from a particular corner, even if you stretch the, the design around, the relative distance to the center of that hole, for example, m will remain the same. And that's called a constraint. And full AutoCAD can do that. Um, AutoCAD LT cannot. Um, smart dimensioning. This is a real nice new feature in AutoCAD 2016. And it's available in uh, both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. And uh, hopefully we'll have time to actually show you that in practice a bit later. But AutoCAD for Mac does not. Um, PDF support, uh, not so much on the, on the Mac side of things. And also there's this new tool called SysVar Monitor. 
those pesky system variables. That's a new tool in 2016 um, where we can look at it and control it. Again, we're looking at, uh, you can see here, we mentioned uh, about uh, Express tools and quite clearly um, AutoCAD LT doesn't have that. Um, but it does appear that AutoCAD for Mac does, but not quite. It has included some of the tools, but there's a whole chunk that are actually missing. Okay. Uh, data extraction, which uh, we discussed as well. And see what else we have. Content Explorer. Got a few more gaps here. Uh, these are some of the higher functionalities uh, that are in some of the vertical components. So I'm not quite sure why they've included that on that particular list. It's not really relevant. Moving on down. Uh, revision clouds enhancements, that's something else that's new to 2016 and we'll have a play with those as well. It's, uh, it's now quite easy to get good looking rev clouds um, around those elements in our drawing that we're planning on changing. Coordinate system seems to be missing as well in AutoCAD for Mac. Uh, DGN, that's the microstation support, is not there in, in Mac. It is in both AutoCAD LT and full-blown uh, AutoCAD, as you would expect. And there's also something called ge uh, geolocation coordinate system. This is where you can link in to, I think they use Bing Maps inside of AutoCAD, so that you could actually bring a map into your uh, CAD file and uh, overlay it with uh, uh, the, your CAD detail of a building, perhaps. So, and that one's really quite cool. And that's with, that was introduced a couple of versions ago, but they have enhanced it since. Moving on down, we can see that there's, yeah, the application programming area here has been highlighted again. Now, it says it's here, but it's worth mentioning, and I haven't said this so far, that AutoCAD for Mac is available in, in both a full version, okay, and this is showing us the details of the full version, as well as an LT. So if you go for the LT for Mac, um, any of the elements that you see uh, in this column would also be represented on the AutoCAD for Mac as well. Okay, network licenses we, we mentioned. And there's a few enhanced areas there. And of course, once again, we also mentioned about network licensing. And, and again, it says it's available for the AutoCAD for Mac, but bear in mind, that's only if it's the full version again. Okay. So that's one of the many uh, matrix that you can, for comparing uh, different products when you're trying to make that choice. Um, and it's not uncommon for offices to have a mixture of both, uh, depending on what your needs are. And you know that's not a problem. We can help out with that. Now, I thought while well, we've got this opportunity, for those of you that would be that could be interested in the AutoCAD for Mac, I'll give you a quick look at it. I've done a few screenshots um, because it is, if you've not seen AutoCAD for Mac, it is quite different from our Windows-based tool that we are so so familiar with. Okay. So this is when you start up your AutoCAD for Mac, this is what we see. Um, we've got, this is our welcome screen, just as we have in full, uh, in normal windows. And you've got the create panel. We've got a uh, learning feature. Okay, so here's some you know, how-to videos, just as the same as we have here. And there's some extended elements there, which are uh, forum ar areas and training videos uh, and services and support that you can get directly from Auto. Uh, desk themselves. So we go back to the uh, create area here. So let's have a look to see how the AutoCAD for Mac interface, how it actually looks. So I just create a new drawing. Ta -da! Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is AutoCAD for Mac is quite a popular choice, you know, um, but as you can see, it's quite different. It's quite different indeed. Um, we have our layers area here, and this can be uh, 
um, expanded. We've got some expander buttons here. We've got what they call the properties inspector where we can find all of our normal properties area. Here down below is your all oh, the drawing aids on the status bar and uh, this can be expanded up to include 3D uh, drawing aids as well. Now this over here, this area, these are all our normal drawing tools. Okay, so you can grab um, all of the normal drawing tools from here. We've got this base. Now the funny thing regarding this is this our drawing area that we have here. These are all floating windows. Okay, so you can have quite a few of these open in one go, and uh, it, it can be useful, but it's a very f more flexible, fluid uh, system as opposed to it being a rigid, fixed system that we're used to in the uh, of having defined tabs going across to see each of the pages. Now, if you wanted to actually see uh, annotations, and um, there's a little drop-down list here, and you can see you can switch this palette from drafting mode to annotation mode to uh, modeling. So if I click on the annotation there, we can see here we've got, you know, text and all of our usual dimension tools and we've got the multi leaders and then similarly there are the 3d tools providing of course that you're looking at AutoCAD for Mac full version not LT again the LT version wouldn't have uh, that particular bar to offer you these 3d tools so that's AutoCAD for Mac I thought I'd give you the opportunity uh, to have a quick look at it, it is quite different. Um, and I think with the dark look that it's got, I think some of this has been brought that, that the look and feel of it to a certain extent has been uh, passed over to uh, our AutoCAD for Windows as well regarding this uh, high contrast dark uh, uh, palette of color schemes that we have these days. Okay, moving on. Right, let's take a look at uh, AutoCAD and some of the new features that we've got in uh, 2016. Okay. You find uh, some significant improvements to the flexibility and the precision while we're working in both 2D and 3D inside of AutoCAD. Um, a lot of the interface aspects and the way that information is presented to us is uh, a lot cleaner and a lot slicker. It's got a much richer design content and there's more intelligent tools which show with different badges and indicators um, sort of faster and more precise design uh, tools that we can use. Obviously AutoCAD and Autodesk have been pushing this forward and forward and forward now and we're up to 2016 I think that's something like about actually version 33 something of that nature um, so it has been um, progressed and progressed over the years and a lot of the in improvements over here are all about faster performance smoother lines and improved presentation in the 2016 version let's take a quick look at some of those Circles. How many times have you drawn a circle, zoomed in, zoomed out, and you think, I thought I drew a circle, not a polygon. Okay. Um, but now they've improved the, uh, the regenerative engine inside of uh, AutoCAD, and we're now getting much smoother lines, which just, it just aids, you know, viewing the information correctly so you can see where lines are intersecting um, with a lot more clarity. We also have uh, some enhanced uh, PDFs, uh, the creation of these, they're smaller, faster and smarter uh, and, and they've got searchable content. If you're bringing PDFs into AutoCAD, uh, there are also some significant performance enhancements uh, to the underlay feature um, for quicker, more fluid panning and zooming uh, over these PDFs that can be quite large. Uh, the text inside of the PDF is now searchable. Um, if you create a sheet set in AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, um, the hyperlinks to, 
uh, to those drawings um, that make up the sheet are maintained in the PDF. Um, all of the functionality is included in the, that is included in the DWG uh, hyperlinks to external websites, named views, sheets, files. Um, they're all there. So attaching a PDF to your drawing is much faster and it's, it also plots out quicker as well. Um, one of the enhancements I did experience just recently myself was I brought in an A4, which was a, just a basic scale to fit PDF. I inserted a PDF into my AutoCAD. I knew that it was just an A4 document, but because it had been produced from AutoCAD, AutoCAD immediately understood what scaling factor it was, even though it was scale to fit, it was no particular scale at all. And it resized it for me, back to one to one, um, which is brilliant. But I was actually trying to demonstrate how to uh, use the scaling function, so it kind of mucked me up a bit, but in a good way. Right. Um, so you've also got a lot more control over the vector and the raster and the image quality when you're actually doing a PDF output. Um, the output has got the same fidelity as it used to have, but the file size they've improved. It's about half the size of what it used to be. So that's really good news. Um, PDF plotting performance uh, for drawings that contain a large amount of text and polylines and fill patterns have also been improved. Coordination modeling. Okay, so here we can see we've got a 3D model. This, uh, in this particular view, what we're looking at is coordination of uh, an AutoCAD MEP model. Um, but what's key here is inside of the full-blown version of AutoCAD, um, the new coordination model feature eliminates a lot of other unnecessary guesswork. Uh, you might use AutoCAD alongside other programs uh, such as Navisworks or Revit um, or even other construction focused software built on AutoCAD, some of those verticals that, that I mentioned uh, earlier. Now with this, it, the new coordination model it allows you to attach and view Navisworks and BIM 360 glue models directly inside of AutoCAD. Um, Navisworks, for those who may not be, if you're not familiar with it, Navisworks is a really powerful tool that allows you to bring in um, drawings, 3D models ideally, from a whole different manner of different bits of software, even non-Autodesk software, and they'll all come in and they'll coordinate and you can measure and you can do clash detection. It, um, as a management and coordination tool. It's not designed for drawing, it's designed for checking out for clashes, seeing how to make sure that all the different people that are using, uh, producing different elements to a project, that everything fits, and you can check it out in Navisworks. It's a very powerful tool. Um, so that's coordination uh, modeling that's now been improved. Okay. Reality computing. Um, yeah, this is one of the big ones the, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, point clouds. Okay, Autodesk have made it easy for you to create uh, as-built drawings from point clouds, um, now more com uh, commonly deployed on a lot of construction projects. You can extract floor plans directly from a cross-section of a point cloud, um, or using some of the new snapping tools and the dynamic UCS support, create geometry directly from um, that cloud. So if you could imagine um, what we're looking at here is just a 3D view of a point cloud. And it's interesting that the, you know, these point clouds, they're not just white dots, they've actually got color to them. So they do, uh, they can represent with this mass of dots that are so close together, you can actually see um, the image of what something actually looks like in reality. I didn't mean to use the pun there, but <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, you can spin this around, of course, in full AutoCAD, not LT. Um, and literally, you can t effectively take a, cross, a horizontal cross-section through it, and that's how you could get a plan view of one of these 3D scans. Smart dimensioning. Um, yes. 
Um, smart dimensioning automatically creates the appropriate dimension notes based on the type of objects you select. I'll show you that a bit later. It's, it really is, uh, makes life so much quicker uh, when it comes to uh, dimensioning our drawings. So we'll have a play with that. Okay, so here are some, uh, some of the new features in 2016 as well, uh, just as a roundup. They've improved visual presentation, better coordination on, on models. We've got the smart dimensioning and that SysFar monitor. Um, this SysFar monitor, it's, it sounds a bit techy, a bit geeky, but um, it can actually help uh, you keep an eye on what the system, the various system variables, uh, variables are uh, inside um, of your AutoCAD, just in case somebody has inadvertently changed something in a way that is uh, causing you issues and you may not be aware of it. As well as the enhanced PDFs and the reality computing in 2016, um, Things like the revision cloud have been enhanced, as I mentioned, um, introducing a whole new way of working for, with them, and we'll take a look at that. Now, I mean, with these clouds, you can now actually stretch them, um, and they act like polylines, and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at that a bit later. Right, let's have a bit of a quick demo. Um, and I'll also show you some of the different interfaces between uh, AutoCAD LT and full blown AutoCAD. Okay, bear with me a moment. Yeah, on the point cloud side of things, just had a query come in. Um, today, it's all about having a, a, a broad look at some of the differences between AutoCAD and LT. Uh, I'd love to give, have the opportunity to show you uh, that how you actually put them together, how they actually work. We'd be very happy to do that for you, David, but if we, um, we could probably set something up for you along those lines. Um, uh, that's not a problem, we can do that if that's okay. But today we're just looking at highlighting the differences uh, between the full version and LT. Right, so here we have the two interfaces of AutoCAD on the top and AutoCAD LT um, in the lower section of the screen. Um, so we have the ribbon interface, of course. Um, now, just looking at the various tabs that we have going across um, on here, most of them are there, but there are considerably more in the full-blown version. Okay, immediately apparent um, in the first one we can see is add-ins. Okay, there are no, um, we've got add-ins here in uh, AutoCAD LT. Um, why is that not, there we go. Okay, but it's not quite the same as the add-ins here. I'll show you that once I've opened up a drawing a lot better. Express tools, a complete absence of express tools uh, inside of LT. Um, featured apps, and also there's things here called raster tools. Uh, raster tools are the, uh, is a package that's available in most of the AutoCADs called Raster Design. And this is a program where you can bring in, uh, say, a scanned image, a TIFF file maybe, um, and you can start editing that TIFF file as though it was an actual DWG file. Or you can start converting a scanned image to uh, a vector image, a CAD file. Okay. So immediately we can see that there are less uh, ribbons available, less tools. Okay, but then again, um, AutoCAD LT is uh, considerably cheaper than the full blown version. Right. Just going to minimize this for a moment. So when you first start off um, your AutoCAD 2016, whether it's AutoCAD uh, or AutoCAD LT, 
uh, you should get this new welcome screen that's now been integrated um, as opposed to it being that floating element. We've got here the uh, recent documentations, any recent drawings that you've got, and uh, you can scroll down. And what's quite useful is you can always uh, pin them in place if you never want them to leave uh, your recent documents list, which can be very handy indeed. Um, we've also got learning facilities here, just like we had in the other element in the uh, AutoCAD for Mac. And hey presto, we have got these videos for what's new, getting started, feature videos. And we've got some further online resources here. Now we can go back to the Create tab. I can, I can go back to the Create tab here or here. There we go. Um, if you click Start, it'll open up your default uh, file, file, or of course you can go off and pick any particular uh, template that you may have. Okay. So, got a uh, very very simple drawing uh, in here. So, I mentioned. Um, that we've got some differences. I'm just going to open up a drawing in the other LT version. Now, I did mention about this thing called parametrics, which is the ability to apply uh, constraints and intelligence uh, between lines of geometry. And it does appear at first glance that the LT has it, even though I did say it hasn't. Now, the thing is, um, we can in LT, you can see any constraints, and you can hide the constraints, and you can delete constraints. However, um, you can't actually create any. And uh, that's the difference. OK, so if you have got an office where you're using uh, uh, mixed uh, platforms from full-blown AutoCAD through to LT, then your LT people can at least then experience the any constraints that you may put in. But unlike AutoCAD, in the full-blown AutoCAD here, we've actually got the constraint technology that we can use to add this kind of intelligence. Moving along. On the insert area, there's a big difference here as well. If I go to the insert area, bring that back. Okay. So on the insert, this is where we'd actually use, uh, we've got the points cloud that I talked about. And of course, and of course, there's a complete absence of uh, any point cloud uh, panel being available along the LT ribbon. OK, it just isn't there. Now, this is there's two ways of using this. Uh, you either attach files directly. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail here, but very briefly, I just want to show you um, this on the if you use the insert, it's looking for what we call a recap, an RCP file, okay? Um, now, a recap file is a file that you've used or that you've probably generated or somebody's provided to you um, and they've used Autodesk uh, Recap. Um, Autodesk Recap uh, is a program. It's an external program. It's also available um, on the web whereby you can bring in various uh, point cloud data. Okay, these could be produced by you know, systems such as Leica, and you'll have an F FLS file, for example, and all of these are co normally coordinated. Bringing them directly into AutoCAD is possible. However, it can, can be a bit cumbersome 
to make it work efficiently. Uh, but the recap program uh, can bring in and consolidate that data very, very efficiently. So hence, Autodesk have got recap. And if you are going to be looking at the point clouds, and we can look at that in a separate session in more detail, um, you'd be best off using the recap and then you bring in the file that recap produces from your raw data files. Okay. Okay, moving along. Output. Your output's the same, so you, you've got the uh, plotting and the batch plotting facility. If you've not played with batch plotting facility, it really is useful. If you've got big quantities of drawings of a particular project that you issue out to PDF or you actually print them on a regular basis, uh, using the batch plot is a very good tool. It requires a little bit of setup to start with, but in the long run, it is an extremely efficient and quick way of performing those repeatable uh, print tasks that we have. Add-ins, okay. In LT, um, I talked about that API, and it doesn't have one. Um, apart from a couple of very, very simple elements that come directly from Autodesk themselves, um, even though it's got an add-in things, there's not a great deal you can do. In full-blown AutoCAD, okay, what you would do is you can go off and get a whole selection of files from the Exchange Apps Manager. Okay, you don't have to click on this link here to do it. There is also the Exchange Apps Manager up here. This blue and white cross symbol, and uh, clicking on that will simply launch um, whatever is your default internet browser, and it's going to take you off to the uh, apps page where you can do searches for specific tools. I clicked on this and it has linked. I'm just waiting for the uh, internet to catch up. The speed of this uh, is not <laughs> um, a reflection of the Autodesk uh, uh, website. It's more probably a, a reflection of a, a bit of a local slowdown in our, in our internet service right now probably because somebody's broadcasting and doing a webinar. I'll come back to that. I'll just put that on the other page and it, hopefully it will catch up soon. I'll just try that link as well. Hmm. Aha, uh -huh. here we go, this is what it looks like. Um, so in the Autodesk Exchange apps, now all of these apps are programs that you can bolt on to your full version of AutoCAD. Um, there, you, know, you can look for blocks, building design, civil construction, um, a whole manner of different tools that you can simply download. Some you'll notice are completely free. Um, others are, are chargeable. Okay, there's all sorts of, there's one tool I, I quite have used a lot, and that's a text to geometry tool. So if I put in here text to geom, let's see if I can find it. Need to refine that search by the looks of it. Um, this is one little bolt-on tool that allows you to create a piece of text in any particular font and it will then break it apart and, and, and give you a very nice clean outlined in pure vector formats. It's perfect for sending out to your laser printers uh, to get you know for signage cutting and things like that but if you've got a particular need and you think oh there's got to be a way of automating a particular task probably somebody has already created it 
So go along and have a look in the Autodesk Exchange apps and you can see uh, how things are moving. And you might find something there that's very, very useful. Okay. I'll shut this down. Yeah, so the add-ins here are very limited in the LT. Uh, however, in your full-blown version of AutoCAD, you'd be amazed at the tools that you can uh, you can actually get back. Okay. Here are the express tools that I mentioned, and of course there's a complete absence of an express toolbar. Uh, during the installation process, if you have got, if you are running AutoCAD full version and you don't have this, um, it should have been available in the uh, installation procedure. Uh, during the installation procedure, uh, there's normally a little down arrow to expand options that are available during installation. And by these days, by default, that should be ticked. But if somebody's unticked it um, or some other uh, elements happen to it, then you wouldn't get it. But you can always run a uh, repair on this and actually um, add features. Uh, so if you don't have the Express tools, um, you can get them back into your full version of AutoCAD. So here we got arc align text, for example. Um, convert basic text to M text. So if you've got an old drawing and it's just using that that single line text, and you prefer it to be an M text so that you could start manipulating it in a nice way, uh, then you can do it. But there's uh, all sorts of different tools. There's a break line symbol here, for example, and uh, so the Express tools, there's an awful lot of uh, capability in here um, of tools that are quite nice. Quite often this has been a testing platform uh, for Autodesk and uh, a lot of the main tools that we have now originally started in the Express tools. Okay, moving along. Featured apps, oh look. So basically, again, the featured apps isn't available because it's all about what's av what sort of exchange apps are available. And it's a bit like an advertising uh, board, and they, they highlight providing you're connected to the internet. It will highlight um, possible things that you may be interested in adding to your AutoCAD. BIM 360 is part of the uh, cloud tools, and we've got things like glue which is a separate program. Again, it's a great for management on coordination of uh, site drawings and project work. And I mentioned also raster tools. Um, raster tools, again, only available in uh, full-blown AutoCAD because it supports raster imagery. Raster imagery is the correct uh, terminology, the, the technical terminology for any image file, an image file being a bitmap, a TIFF, a JPEG. PNG. Okay, all of those that are just made up of pixels are raster files, and so all of these uh, you can use these raster tools in to create file, to create elements. You can start stretching things with this rubber sheet. So if, if something's been photocopied and then scanned and it's kind of skewed, <laughs> this can help you. This rubber sheet can help you uh, straighten it up. Uh, there's some cleanup tools like Deskew, Despeckle, um, very handy, and so if you've got a, a drawing that's quite dotty, it's really old, maybe it's an old, even an old blueprint, remember those? Um, these despeckling tools can help clean up those images before you perhaps start working on them. So that's raster tools. Okay. Excuse me a second. Okay, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the new tools uh, that uh, 2016 uh, is offering us. You probably recognize all of these standard dimensions uh, that you would have in a particular project. And, uh, you know, traditionally we've always used these kind of uh, 
basic linear aligned and angular tools to be able to mention to uh, create those so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to I'm just going to delete all of these and say uh, select similar and we can uh, delete those that one, that one, that one. and this new tool it really is very good there it is it's uh, the new uh, dimension tool it's, it's quite a powerful tool and this is how it works Now I've got a warning box come up because the tech, the dimension style that I'm using is an annotative one and it wants to know what size it is. So I'm going to say I want text that's going to be suitable for 1 to 100 and OK. okay. And down here my annotation has been set to 1 to 100 so it knows that the text that I'm, the dimensions that I'm just about to place uh, will be the appropriate size. Um, and according to the, the uh, and its dimension style area, it's going to be 2.5 millimeter high at a scale of 1 to 100. OK, let's see how this works. So basically, just hover your mouse over something. You'll get a preview. You'll get your cursor changes to a selection square. Click on it. Pull it out. There it is. Done. Aligned tools, exactly the same. Isn't that easy? How about angles? So if I uh, let's come in and I'm going to click on that, but then I'm also going to click on this one as well. Now I haven't placed it. There we go. It just works. OK, um, for those of you that have been using some of the uh, higher end vertical products uh, like Inventor, this is probably no new thing to you, but to us, Simple AutoCAD people. Uh, this is a really a fantastic new enhancement, and uh, hopefully you're going to have a lot of fun with that. It's going to certainly make life uh, a lot, lot quicker. Now, we've also got some tool enhancements on the uh, text side of things. Um, now, I'm just going to place. When you start typing uh, some text out these days, pop a box in here. I'll zoom in slightly. Um, now, if I start um, typing, I'm going to put in, for example, put in some notes. OK, I'm then just going to type in one, hit a space bar and Oops, not going to worry about that. I didn't have to use the bulleting tool. It immediately recognized that, oh, you're doing some uh, bulleted style notes. It recognized the one, it recognized the decimal point and a space, and then it figured it out for itself, which is really nice. Um, in addition, suppose I'm going to put in uh, a piece of area information, area 154M. Now, I want m squared, of course. What we can do here, if I highlight that too, up here, I could have subscript. But of course, what I want is a superscript. So <laughs> another nice, uh, simple thing, but very, very uh, handy. Now, obviously, previously, we would have gone to the symbol tools, and we would have needed to add it from here, or maybe even type in the Unicode. Fortunately, we don't have to remember those things uh, anymore. Now, if I add a couple more bits of text here. Now in here, um, on, our, on the text these days, uh, what we can also do is line text up. 
Okay, and you can, uh, there's now, you may be familiar with the align tools that you've got with multi-leader, so you can also um, use alignment here as well. So for example, here it is, a text align. Okay, so I'll pick that piece, that piece, that piece, finish my selection, and it says select an object to align to. So I could pick a piece of text, and boom, all nicely lined up. Yeah. You could also do this with uh, any piece of geometry as well. So if you wanted to line it up with an existing piece of vector works, you could do that. Okay, now I mentioned about these multi-grips, uh, multi-grip functionality. Um, let's take a look at how that actually looks. Uh, well, some of the f functionality that that offers. Okay, now I'm going to use this tool here, and I want to pick between that point and that point, stretch it down. Now, if I want to then start measuring the rest of these, of course, traditionally what we'd have to do is come up and use these continue tools here, but we don't need to. Okay, so you could just add a dimension from your home screen right here, it's no problem. And from there, you think, well, now I've got to go to the annotate ribbon. No, if you pick on one of these, there's a grip, hover over it, and say, well, actually, could we continue those dimensions, please? And off we go. Simple as that. So wherever you've got any blue grips, it's always worthwhile uh, taking a look and just hovering over them for a moment and see what they do. Just a quick example. If I just do a simple line like so. Just hovering over the end here, we have some multi-grip functionality. Now, there's one called stretch, which I'm never going to, I'm not going to be both too bothered by, because it offers me the same functionality as it would as if I just clicked on the grip and moved it around. However, lengthen is really nice, because it now means I can lengthen this, and it will maintain its angle nice and easy. So if I just want to make this um, an extra two meters longer, I can. Or by pressing the tab key, I could redefine what I'd like the new total length actually to be. So multi-grip functionality. Uh, yeah. Hover over those grips and you'd be surprised what you can see. Um, so just a quick, another quick example here. Rectangle, it's made up of a polyline. If I like, I could say uh, add a vertex. So I can put a vertex in. Or oh, hover over again. I could say, well, actually, let's make that an arc. So this is some of the higher functionalities that we've got. And of course, I'm zooming in really quick. Don't know how that looks over the internet. Um, normally, I would expect that arc that I've just drawn to become faceted. It didn't. Those nice, crisp, clear graphics have uh, successfully come into play. Okay. Um, as I say, a lot of the tools and the enhancements that we've got inside of the uh, 2016 are all these graphical based elements and also uh, things like uh, improved graphics and PDF improvements um, and things of that nature. Just to uh, show you this on the PDF front, um, what I'm going to do here is uh, we'll go to print. Okay. I'm going to choose a, uh, a DWG to PDF printer here, A4. I'll use a window. Just going to do that. Uh, center the plot, felt, scale to fit, fit the paper. And I'll just make that full color. Just pop that on my desktop. Okay, so that was quick. There it is. Okay, so 
So there's the PDF that we've been able to generate very quickly. Um, it looks like I clipped uh, that wall, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, let's see what happens when I bring this document in, which of course is uh, A4. Yeah, let's see what happens when we actually bring this in to our DWG file. Various, there's so many ways of bringing a PDF in these days. Um, There's the file we just generated yeah, today. Here's the box. Um, I will say, I'm only going to put a tick box in here. I'm not going to change the scale. And uh, OK, let's see what happens. It's one to one. And that was an A4 document. And it's just figured it out for itself. Don't have to bother about rescaling that anymore. It's it's just correct. Let's um, we can double check that, of course. Look at that! Oh, we've lost a mil. We've lost a millimeter. But I was still able to actually. Uh, now that could just be in the uh, unit settings of of rounding up. Okay, but I have lost a millimeter there. And that can always be corrected. OK. Well, there's a roundup of some of the major differences uh, between AutoCAD um, and AutoCAD LT. Um, let's just go back to our main view. OK. Just as a quick refresh um, here for some of the, the key details that we have, um, I've got a compare list here for um, AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD 2016 full blown. And uh, the 3D modeling tools, enhanced customization options, networking licenses, uh, point cloud support, and obviously rendering as well. That naturally goes hand in hand with 3D uh, raster to vector conversions also available and game inspired visualization yeah, we're talking about those nice crisp graphics and the improved uh, rendering uh, facilities on the 3d models of course right um, I know David we're going to come back we can get together again and do um, more in-depth point cloud uh, demonstration for you um, any other questions please feel free to use the uh, chat lines or the question box for that <laughs> that's all right Paul I'll let you off um, I wasn't aware that it would make sense because you probably there may be private comments in there we've just had a, a comment through to say it'd be nice to see what other people are saying um, but yeah, it could be that some of the questions are, could be private. I don't know if that's a facility. That's an, an element that I could look into on the uh, webinar software itself. Right. Um, just had another query, query a question come in, um, looking to see if they could see the beginning of this. Uh, webinar. Well, in fact, you will be able to see the whole of this uh, webinar again uh, fairly soon. Um, I have been recording this session, uh, so we'll get it up onto our uh, blog and onto our YouTube site. Uh, and as soon as that's uh, available, obviously, we'll let you know. And then if you feel that it's going to be useful for anybody else to look at it, you can be more than welcome to share that. Is that OK? Excellent. Well, I've been uh, Greg Benson Shettle, um, one of the application engineers here, and I uh, specialize in the AutoCAD side of things and uh, Revit architecture.
If you've got any further queries, uh, please feel free, drop us a line um, or call 023 80 868 and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, before I sign off, are there any further questions? Well, I hope that's proved useful to you and giving you a broad look at the, at the real differences. You know, why AutoCAD, full AutoCAD is that much more expensive um, than the full, than the LT and uh, maybe even the you like the look of AutoCAD for Mac as well. It's something quite different. Okay, once again, thank you so much for attending uh, this webinar. I know your time is precious, uh, so I appreciate you giving it up to learn a little bit more about the differences here on the various AutoCAD products. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much, and uh, bye for now. <laughs>